Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to make a video talking about the use SWR library in React, which is a very, very famous uh, library. It gained popularity in the past like year, I guess. And I really wanted to make a video on it because it is kind of like where I'm moving towards. You guys seen me using um, a lot of Axios. Sometimes I use some fetch um, to make API calls. And basically, SWR, the, the use SWR hook is, isn't supposed to replace either Axios or Fetch in no way, shape, or form. It is actually a much more advanced uh, system or uh, tool that you can use to basically be able to make very, very powerful API calls. What happens is that with use SWR, actually with either Axios or Fetch, when you usually make a, an API request, uh, the, the, the connection is basically you make the request, you get the response and then that's done, right? However, with use SWR, you can do a lot more than that. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to set up everything and how do you make your first API calls using this hook. So basically what you gotta do is, you can see I have here a React application, very simple. It has literally nothing. Um, you can see right here, it just has an SRC, um, some CSS, app.js, and actually there's nothing in the page. And what I did is I actually created a simple API. There's no need for you guys to do this. Um, you, will, you It is the same like implementation for whichever API you wanna use. If you wanna use this to make a call to a public API, you can do this. Um, but my API I created with Express here, it's very simple, literally what it does and the endpoint that we're gonna be testing in is literally we're going to come here to localhost 3001 slash users and it should return a list of users. We obviously don't have a database or anything like that. It's just an array here, which I can just add more users if I want to. And this is my server, right? This is my API. And you can see that when I reach the API, I get my JSON here. I get my, uh, not, not my JSON, it's just um, my array here containing all the users that are supposed to be like sent through the request, correct? So we're gonna try to make that API request in our um, React application using the SWR library. So to make that happen, first of all, we need to install the SWR um, library, right? So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going, to, I'm going to say yarn add SWR. And if you're using NPM, it's just NPM install SWR. I already installed it, so I'm not gonna install it again, but this is basically the gist of it. You just install it and it should be fine. And then I'm gonna close this. We have here our simple um, React application, right? And initially, I'll just show you guys very, very simply how to import everything and start, get it to, to work. And then I'm gonna show you guys some optimizations and how to make it look better for a, a, a larger scale project, right? So initially, what you wanna do is you wanna come to the component where you're going to make the API request and you're gonna come over here and say import and you can say use SWR or I'm actually gonna say it like this from SWR. And this is where we're gonna import the hook. And then to make the API request, it is very simple, very simple. What you do is you come over here, you say const, and then you open and close curly braces and you set it equal to use SWR. And I'm gonna explain what, what all of this means. Um, the hook is over here, as I mentioned, use SWR is a hook. So you kind of have to destructure all the information you wanna get from the hook inside of the curly braces. So the SWR library provides you with a lot of stuff. For example, you not only just receive the data, this is used for asynchronous API calls, meaning that you're expecting to do something after the data is received, and you might get an error, you might receive the data, you might wanna do something while the data is loading. So the, the library itself already handles a bunch of that. For example, the most common way of, of working with this is uh, you can get the data, and data is a property that already comes with the library, and basically just represents the response you're gonna get from the API call. And you might also want an error, right? So if there's any errors, then the library already like replaces the, like gives the error to you throughout this variable. And there's much more, there's like is validating, um, like is validating, there's a bunch of stuff you can use here. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna show all of them, but I'm, I'm gonna show more in depth stuff later in the video. But now comes um, the harder part with the hook, with the library, which is basically over here, you have to pass the URL, correct? So I'm just gonna put here the URL for my API, and you can put whatever API you're using, but mine is just a local host, but in a different port where I'm running my server. And this is actually the endpoint, however, um, as I mentioned, the 
SWR isn't supposed to replace either Axios or Fetch in no way, shape, or form. It actually works together with them, but it improves on their on like their functionality, right? So in this case, you can use either Fetch or you can use Axios because over here, as the second argument, we have to pass the way we're gonna make the API call. So what I like to do, and what obviously most people like to do, I didn't invent this, is just to create a fetcher, right? And a fetcher is just a function which takes like, like takes some arguments, and all it does is it makes an API call through either axios or fetch, and it returns that data. And we're gonna pass that over here. So over here at the top for now, I'm just gonna create the fetcher. Let's call it fetcher. And what we do is we pass here that we want to grab args. And why we pass args is because over here, this will be replaced by this over here, which is the URL that we're going to make the API call. And then we're going to say equal to, and we're going to use the arrow function. And then in this case, I'm just going to use the fetch function that comes with JavaScript. I don't want to install axios. And, and since fetch is already something that is built in, I don't want to um, try to like insert more stuff out from outside. So I'm just going to use fetch. Basically to make an API call with fetch, you just say fetch and I'm going to pass the arguments, which is the URL for the API. Then I'm going to say dot then and we're going to grab the response and then we're going to say something like response and then we're going to say something like response dot JSON, right? And this is the usual for when you're using fetch. I'm going to open this up a bit. This is the usual. And you might be wondering, wait, so why are we actually creating a fetcher? Why don't we just make the use fetch whenever we want to make an API call? Well, because this is very handy. Now you have fetch, a function called fetcher, which automatically uh, through this args uh, syntax over here, it grabs the URL that you want to put. And now you can just pass fetcher over here. And it knows that you're making the API call to this, um, to this URL over here. So it this over here grabs this passes through this makes the API call and the response that we get in this response.json gets passed to the data. So the, all of this is to make it work, right? So what do we want to do now? Well, we just want to display our data um, as like a list or something because we our data is actually an array, right? So what I want to see is actually I just want to see the data appearing in my screen like it would appear if we were to use um, like fetch or axios normally, right? So to do that, I can just directly access data. We don't even need to have a, a, a variable like a state to represent our result of our API call. We can just directly come over here and grab data. And we can also access error if there is any. So we can do that. If you want to check for error, you can say something like come over here and say if error, then you want to return like <laughs> the error, something like this, like this error. Um, but honestly, I don't think there will be any errors. Um, so let's just continue here. The idea is that what you want to do is while the data hasn't appeared yet. So let's ask, well, if data has appeared, then we want to show our data. So I'm going to put something like, uh, for now, let's just actually ignore this. But if the data is, doesn't appear, then I just want to show a message saying loading. So it's just a, a ternary operator, as you can see. Uh, question mark and a uh, colon, but between this we can put the what we're gonna do if the data has been received. So we gotta check to see if the data has been received because obviously uh, it takes some time for the data to be received, and we don't want to be accessing the data before we actually receive it. So let's come over here and say um, if we like if the data has been received. Let's say data dot map, and um, we're gonna receive the data each user for each user. I just want to um, return. Um, an h1 saying user, like displaying the name, and I'm going to save this obviously, so you guys can see it better. But basically, what we're doing here is we're just asking, well, has the data been received? If it has, then I want to map through the list of the data, which is an array, and just return uh, for each user, just return the user name. And if it hasn't, then the display loading. And that that's great, because now we have like an instance of when it's loading or not loading, right. So let's check now. And you can see that actually our data has been received. And it's super fast, as you can see, obviously, I'm making an API call to my own computer, but I'm receiving the data that was over here. But there's something important here, I'm going to show you guys, take a look, I'm not refreshing my page, right? This is something extremely cool with like the SWR library, but I'm not refreshing my page, I'm going to come over here to my API. And I'm even going to like, 
open this up a bit so you guys can take a look at the same time I'm 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 writing my code but basically I'm gonna come over here to my API which has nothing to do with my react application so it's something completely external and and I'm just gonna add someone here I'm gonna add um, I don't know um, Michael Scott okay just added this guy and I'm actually gonna refresh my server because I'm not using node one I need to refresh my server whenever I make any changes so I'm gonna say node index.js. Again, this is just my API. Imagine I just received like my, imagine if it, it was in your case that your API received new data, right? So I just received new data. And you can see my server is running again, which is great, meaning that the changes has been applied, but like it's still showing Pedro, um, Jack and Katarina. It's not showing Michael Scott, right? Well, check what happens when I click on my browser. I'm not currently on my browser, I'm on my, um, VS code, but when I click on my browser, Michael Scott immediately appears. And why does this happen? Well, the reason why that happens is because in many applications, a lot of people like suffer, not suffer, but a lot of people have to handle manually the fact that when a user gets up and like leaves their computer, um, they might have like data that is old, right? So you want to constantly be updating your data. Re, uh, depending on if the user is actually focused on your tab or not. So if I were like, I made an API call here. So, and I went here to my, to this tab, when I come back, I want to have the updated version of that API call. So that's exactly what happens. Um, you use SWR has some fetching that occurs on focus. So basically for focused on this tab, then it's not, it's not going to update obviously because you're going to be wasting million API calls. But if you leave this tab and you come back, then it's going to make that API call again. And remember that this is a library for for like remote data fetching and also for it helps you cache your data. So uh, you can use it to a bunch of different stuff. For example, I'm going to show you guys something really interesting, but basically um, you can do it for a lot of stuff. For example, if you want to cache data, imagine that you you're using React Router DOM, right? And you have um, three different tabs or three different routes that you want to click and you make an API call for one of the routes. When you go to the second route, then you want to keep the data, right? You want to cache the data that you, th that you received from the first API call so that you don't need to make an API call every single time you move routes. So that can be done easily with use SWR or not use SWR, but with SWR library as a whole. Right. And what I decided to do now is actually, I'm going to show you guys something interesting that you can do. Um, if you want to optimize your project, and you want to, for example, you don't want to just write a fetcher for every component that you, you have, for example, what you can do is actually you can create a, an, like a, a configuration component for your SWR. And basically you're going to pass the fetcher through that one. And it's going to be a higher order, order component, meaning that we're going to have it over all of our components, which is going to use the used SWR um, fetcher. And we can just pass it through there and we don't actually have to have access to this fetcher directly. I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. Okay, guys. So as you guys can see over here, I made some changes to the project here. What I did is basically I created here a component called users.js and I just copied all the code that we had previously. It's the same code, but it's a bit different. And the reason why it's different is that you can clearly see that the use SWR doesn't have a fetcher over here. And also there's no fetcher or at the top here, like it was before. And still, um, it works. As you can see, still we're fetching the data, the data is being displayed here. So how did the, how does this actually work? Well, if you come here to my app.js, I imported something called the SWR config, and it's basically a config component, which you're able to display a bunch of information and define a bunch of information about your, about the library as a whole. Right. And one of the things that you can do is basically you can wrap all of your components with this um, SWR config component and you can pass as a value the fetcher and you can say I created the fetcher over here in my like uh, on the top component on the highest component and I passed as the value here and it knows automatically that it's going to use that for every time we're going to we, we have a use SWR um, hook right so this is basically the idea and now I can just call this and the data works and also just as a final note, so you guys, just to show how interesting this is, basically, if you're interested in seeing all the different things that the SWR 
uh, library has related to all the functionalities that it has. Um, the GitHub documentation for it, so SWR, um, let me see this documentation over here. It's pretty nice. Um, I recommend taking a look at it. Um, it has a bunch of stuff. For example, as you can see, it has a bunch of features. One of the features that I'm finding most interesting is actually interval polling, which basically you can come over here and you can pass because for every request, you can pass a bunch of properties inside of you by just passing here, um, uh, like a, a, an object, right? And this object can has, can have a bunch of properties. One of the properties is actually refresh interval and you can pass here an interval to which it's going to make that API call. It's constantly making that API call. And there's a bunch of different properties that you can add. You can see all of them over here. This is the options object, which you can pass all of this. Um, you can even disable that feature that I showed you guys earlier, which uh, ref makes the API call whenever you like enters on focus again, you can disable that if you want. But here are all the different options that you can put. And my recommendation is that if you're new to React, and you're new to making API calls, new to making projects related to uh, data handling and using APIs, then don't use SWR because it is more advanced. But if you're used to using XUse and Fetch and you're just wanting to improve your skill set, then definitely learn SWR. I just made this video as an introduction video because I wanted to show you guys how, how cool this is in my opinion. I've been moving towards using it a lot in my projects, so I definitely recommend if you like if you guys are interested um, using it. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and comment down below what you want to see next. I want to have I, I need more ideas for the next video. So I would really be interested if you guys can leave a comment down below telling me what what you want to see. And yeah, subscribe because I'm posting almost every day. I'm coming back and posting um, this week um, again in the regular schedule. So yeah, really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.